and I'm back. Hello, it's Tammy. Um, so yeah, I'm here in my car, as you can see. <laughs> I'm actually waiting for someone, and I didn't want to go indoors, and it's a little breezy, but it's very sunny outside right now, and I would rather speak to you without my sunglasses than with my sunglasses. So here we sit, and have computer, will video. Anyway, with that said, one of the things that I want to begin doing is addressing numbers, uh, different oils, um, what they're good for from my perspective, not from the perspective of what a website or, or a, an aromatherapy book. Some of the things I may say are, you know, they kind of cross over, but the bottom line is, is what I really want to do is highlight some of these things and begin to um, address what the various constituents are um, I won't go into a, an extraordinary amount of detail unless it is something that you desire. Um, but I want to explain how I'm using them genetically. And um, again, all of this is backed. This is all information that I've obtained via research that's been conducted in other countries. I, you know, I'm a, it seems to me there might be a few American researchers involved in these studies. Um, I mean, I don't read all of their names, but they um they're extraordinary bits of information that our scientists are discovering and um it's very useful when it comes to this level of work um and being able to incorporate both worlds both the medical you know pharmaceutical world and uh, and the natural world the natural remedies to create what i call holistic i'm going to try to make a heart yeah Holistic. <laughs> anyway, um, so today I wanted to talk about lemongrass. Okay, lemongrass is a really lovely, um, rather fragrant, flowery um, oil that um, one of my little kiddos in New Zealand was too strong for him. He didn't like it. And interestingly enough, um, I don't ship to other countries. Um, I was consulting with his father, who is a th psychotherapist with um, um, clinical psychotherapist within the hospital system, uh, treatment facilities in New Zealand. He also travels to England and uh, works in the UK over there out of hospitals. And um, it's been amazing to be able to exchange information and support these clinics from afar, including his own children. However, I had recommended um, um, lemongrass for this young man. And um, here again, it was a really good example of how you can use an oil for so long, but you got to stop after a while. You can't continue to use the same oils because the chemistry adjusts itself. That's what we're doing every day. Every day you eat, you breathe, you drink, you're adjusting your chemistry. So to use something in the case, in this case, essential oils on a daily basis because you like the aroma or somebody said it was good for this purpose um, doesn't mean that you need to stick with it um, for very long. Now, there are some oils that do come with a caution, such as like, I think, you know, juniper oil. You're not supposed to use juniper for more than six weeks because it really is um, taxing on the kidneys. Um, but I'm going to go out and say that that goes for every single oil because of the change in chemistry. So with that said, lemongrass. So what is it good for? Well, um, it actually helps. Um, it works um, with the NOS gene. NOS is nitric oxide synthase. It helps to generate SOD catalase, which is the body's way of um, detoxifying, one way of reducing inflammation. Now, when it comes to that particular gene, the nitric oxide, the NOS gene, that gene is linked to, um, adaptations on that gene is linked to uh, uh, many, many health conditions. Because if you're not producing, if you're not, if it's not functioning properly, you're producing a, a chemical called um, peroxynitrite. Okay, so peroxynitrite is um, a neurotoxin. 
it actually can cause cardiovascular issues. So now you have either, you know, nerve damage, you can have um, a lot of um, respiratory and cardiovascular issues. And it will also, can also trigger, um, what am I trying to say? Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, digestive issues such as heartburn, indigestion, you're right. Um, acid, you know, acid reflux and even ulcerative colitis. So depending on your entire genetic structure and other adaptations within your system, you, yours will manifest in any number of ways. Now, um, so that's why you have this whole scope of um, health issues that can stem from just, you know, issues on that, you know, a combination of issues that include nitric oxide synthase. Um, so lemongrass actually helps, like I said, produce the SOD catalase. Now, that particular oil also interacts harshly with the methylation accelerator that, um, that a lot of um, naturopathic physicians and doctors will recommend for anybody who is um, having um, methylation issues in such, um, like with the MTHFR. Um, I'm not sure what everybody's calling it, um, but the primary thing that a lot of people talk, I hear everybody talking about is MTHFR, the methylation pathway, it's also epigenome. Um, and when I say it reacts harshly with that particular supplement, and there's two versions of it, there's methylation, methylation accelerator one and methylation accelerator two. And um, when, if you should be taking anything like that, you really want to avoid the lemongrass because lemongrass will cause a um, severe rash or outburst unless you have a clinician who can actually recommend other forms of generating SOD catalase through the, the assistance of oils. Um, you see, oils just modify the genetic expression. They don't fix anything. They just provide the wiring so that the that these um, genes can use the nutrients properly. So um, that is one really good aspect to it. Um, you want to make sure that you use lemongrass um, for... I'm sorry, not for... You want to use lemongrass in a carrier because it can create sensitivity to the skin tissue. And you also can, um, another condition you can use it for, um, well, has it's, it's linked to the nitric oxide, is indigestion. You can actually put that in a carrier oil and massage it into your, onto your abdomen and um, as well as inhale it and you will help relieve um, the upset stomach and really relieve that indigestion. So that's another good one, especially if you combine that with um, ginger. If you're prone to IBS, um, irritable bowel syndrome, a little bit of lemongrass and ginger um, applied to the abdomen will help relieve symptoms um, rather quickly. Now, again, I'm not just about the symptom relief. Keep in mind um, there's another couple of factors going on in here. Like I said, you're dealing with nitric oxide synthase and with ginger, ginger actually helps to cut serotonin um, when it, there's a spike and IBS has been linked to um, um, serotonin issues because serotonin is the primary, um, primary neurotransmitter when it comes to digestive tract um, health. So that would be my recommendation for the, you know, because you don't, I don't want you to use just one. I want you to use two. And that way you can actually help regulate. But you see, it's again, like I want to emphasize here, it's more not just the symptom relief. It's really what chemistry are you affecting in the body? And this isn't long term. Okay. This is just for, you know, short term. Now, if you are dealing with nitric, nitric oxide synthase issues, you can use the lemongrass for a while. Um, as long as you're not combining it with some of the supplements that I mentioned. Some of the constituents that it contains is, um, one is a really important one called gerianol. And gerianol, and that's, um, I want to say it's G-E-R-I-A-N-O-L. Gerianol works with a number of different genes. Um, it works besides 
it, besides working with NOS, it also works on the um, PEMT gene. It actually works directly with MTHFR because um, no matter which version you have of it, um, geraniol does affect the methyl, um, the folate. I'm sorry, not methyl, but the folate cycle. So those are another couple of good reasons why. Now, if you have issues with lemongrass, well then um, that's another conversation to be had. Things that you can substitute in place of. Um, but like I said, I really want to try and keep these to a minimum of one oil. I realize I mentioned ginger, but I was also talking about acid ind indigestion. Um, I'm trying to think of... Um, I think that's about it for the for the time being when it comes to the lemongrass. It also contains myrcene. It has a small amount of limonene in it. Limonene is a very good one to be used for um, for um, cancer. Um, there again, depending on what other supplements you're using in addition to um, the lemongrass, you can include lemongrass in your regime for recovering um, alongside with chemo. Um, it doesn't do anything for the liver, but it does help detoxify. It actually helps to flush those toxins from the body. Remember, it helps to produce SOD catalase. Um, there's a lot of nausea involved with chemotherapy. So the, so the um, lemongrass and ginger would be a really dynamite. In fact, lemongrass, ginger, and peppermint would be a really dynamite way to help detoxify, support the liver, and ease the nausea when it comes to cancer. So that would be another way of using it. Um, it's also, uh, that's the other factor. It's an interesting dynamic if you think about it, like I said, because ginger actually regulates serotonin, okay? So lemongrass, pardon me, actually j stimulates serotonin production. So there you have the synergistic effects of the two oils, where one is producing it, one's preventing a spike, and it's also relieving the gastrointestinal upset. So that would, that's another reason why that would be a, a really super blend. Um, and if you're, like I said, if you're dealing with chemo um, for whatever health issues, because I know they use chemo for other situations, um, and you have the nausea, you can include the peppermint, the um, lemongrass, and the ginger to combat the nausea balance the um balance the gastrointestinal upset as well as protect the liver um it also helps it's a very relaxing oil so if you have a child who um say an autistic child who has difficulty sleeping the chances of serotonin being a problem and being you know serotonin during the day versus um before it gets converted to melatonin, really increasing your serotonin levels during the day. Um, sounds, even though it's a soothing oil, you have agitated children. I mean, autistic children are just, I can't begin to express my feelings for these babies. Um, I could cry just thinking about the ones I get to, I get to work with. Nonetheless, um, you have agitated, you have stimming, you have scripting, you have a lot of sensory overload. So to actually help them generate more um, serotonin during the day so that they can then convert that serotonin to melatonin. Now, obviously, there's other things that need to be factored into that, which number one is the conversion, actually helping the body to convert the serotonin to melatonin. Um, but there again, that is dependent upon your child or the individual child. So this is not a be-all, fix-all remedy. This is a suggestion, and it's something that you can try. And that little boy that I mentioned that's in New Zealand, um, that was one of the reasons. He was having a very difficult time sleeping, and we started him on this, and he just went out. Um now, his dad got really busy with the hospital, so I, I think it had been about, we'd gone about 10 days in between talking, and um, in that short amount of time, this little guy went from, he was sleeping incredibly, 
but he was really oppositional. He started developing this, I, I don't want that, that oil, that smell. Um, and so when his dad contacted me and he's telling me he's like, he was in bed by eight o'clock at night. He was, you know, wanting to sleep till, you know, mid, mid to late morning, if not noon. I mean, he was just always asleep. Um, but he was also resisting the oil. And as soon as I heard that, that told me that he didn't need it any longer and that he needed to stop. So I took him off of it and his sleep cycle actually regulated itself. So these are the ways that you can actually use the oils, but it takes a real hands-on attentive approach to your well-being and what your body is needing because these minor little details are so important in, in really reinventing a relationship with yourself so that you can actually go, okay, I need to pay attention to this. I need to ascertain this. I need to run this by somebody to get their opinion. Because remember, when we're, to it, when we're so emotionally attached to the outcome and when it's our own health, we are, we're not the best practitioners for that. So it's really important to maintain some level of professional relationship somewhere so that you can at least check in, whether via email or by phone, and say, hey, look, I've got this going on. What do you suggest? So um, that is where I'm going to end at for today. If you have any questions about lemongrass, if I didn't cover enough for you, by all means, let me know. Um, a couple of other constituents I think, I don't know if I mentioned, was myrcene, limonene. It also contains nariol, uh, which is another um, very, um, it, again, that's, that's one of the soothing components to it. So, but the two big factors I really want to hit on today is the serotonin. Um, because you can get your serotonin levels too high, which will cause anxiety and headaches. Um you can also um, you can also see healing crises in um, with a mixture of other supplementation. Neither one of these are bad. It's just that as soon as that healing crisis shows up, you need to go. Whoa, what do I need? So there you have it. If you have any questions, comment below or email me. I'm always here for you. And until then, have a wonderful evening. Thanks. Bye bye now.